Right now at 530, it's some of the most sought after property in the world. But tonight, one team of researchers believes that hundreds of waterfront homes here on the First Coast could be uninhabitable within the next 30 years. And here's what we're talking about. It is all due to the potential risk for daily flooding. A new report says that as sea levels rise, property values will sink. And it's no surprise Florida stands to lose the most. Ann Schindler is on your side looking into this new report. She joins us now live. Ann? Well, anybody that lived through Irma knows the devastating psychological impact of living through a flood, but this report by the Union of Concerned Scientists says the long-term economic impacts could be equally hard to take. The study matched sea level projections with real estate values from the website Zillow and found more than 300,000 U.S. homes will see chronic flooding within the next 30 years. Florida will face the worst of it. 64,000 homes are expected to experience chronic flooding by the year 2045. 471 homes in Jacksonville Beach, 292 homes in St. Augustine. But by the year 2100, that number jumps. 1,500 homes in Jacksonville Beach, 6,600 homes in St. Augustine, and more than 5,100 homes in Ponte Vedra, 34% of the community's homes. By the start of the next century, the report says flooding will impact a million homes in Florida with a taxable value of $5 billion. Duval County First, property appraiser Jerry Holland says despite the dire projections, waterfront property in Jacksonville remains the city's most desirable land. People are still optimistic, thinking even when there's a storm or rising waters that uh, they won't have the problem again in the near future, or the rising waters is something they're thinking about 10, 20, or 30 years from now. So the market really has not reflected any concerns at this point. Our highest values in Duval County are waterfront properties and the highest areas that the values keep going up. Now this study emphasizes that the impacts would be felt before the 30 year life of most mortgages. Their guide for what prospective homebuyers need to consider is on our website. But just a short while ago, I was talking with our meteorologist and all around weather guru, Tim Deegan, and he was making the point that the kind of flooding discussed in this report isn't so much a beachfront issue as an intracoastal and bayfront concern. And I think he's going to join us with more on that now. Put well, Ann, no doubt about it. With all of us here in Northeast Florida and Southeastern Georgia, we are connected to the ocean. And I'm talking about creeks connected to the St. John's 30 miles away. But let's really focus in if we're going to talk about some mortgages here from St. Augustine all the way up to St. Simon's Island. No doubt about it, when there's a major storm, a hurricane, we look at the ocean front. But remember, for most of the geographical area from St. Augustine north to St. Simon's, there's a bit of a ridge between the intercoastal and the ocean. In addition to that, most homes now are forced to build higher above sea level as compared to along the bayfront in St. Augustine, or for instance, the estuaries of St. John's County, of Duval County. Think all of the homes that flooded or nearly flooded during Matthew and Irma, these are all the homes of greatest concern. So don't necessarily think about the ocean. In fact, because many of these homes were built at levels not too many feet above sea level, and there's more of them from St. Augustine through Duval, all the way up to Nassau, Camden, and Glen. That a, at least a fact you'll want to think about uh, if you're thinking about a 30-year mortgage, Heather.